Well, it is that time of the year. Hunting season is just around the corner. Crops are being harvested. Maybe we're gonna cut a little firewood for the winter. And if you're five to seven years younger than I am, you're probably thinking about Halloween. Halloween is just around the corner. Well, today's habitat tip is about how a properly designed and implemented Pheasants Forever Habitat project both can and should be designed to impact a whole wide range of wildlife. Well, you can't have Halloween without pumpkins. And pumpkins are an example of a produce that relies heavily on pollinators to be able to be produced. And one of the examples of a native pollinator that helps us make pumpkins is the squash bee. Well, we know that the squash bee is a native bee whose populations are in decline due to loss of habitat and pesticide use. Well, here's something else we know. The same kind of habitat that we want to design to benefit squash bees will be helpful to grassland songbirds, honeybees, monarch butterflies, pheasants and quail. We all really want the same kind of habitat needs. Here's what we're talking about. You know, some of the key components for great native bee habitat for things like squash bees would be three things. One, we need to have areas of bare open ground within our habitat project because 70% of the native bees in North America actually nest in the ground. So they have to have access to that. Second, I want to be able to get a little sunlight on the ground. And third, I want to be able to have a habitat that is highly diverse and has lots of different flowering plants. Well, guess what? Those three components are the exact components that we want to have in high quality pheasant and quail brood rearing habitat. When we design a habitat project and think about the seed mixture, where you're going to plant it, how you're going to plant it, these are all factors that are really important because they're going to determine the value that you get out of your habitat project for the next five or ten years. So when we're designing a project, I suggest that you consider six factors. One, what's your target species and what are their specific habitat needs? What is going to be the cost of the project and what your budget is? What future management activities are you planning to apply to the project? What kind of site preparation is needed for the project? How about visual appeal? Do you want the project to look real flowery and showy? And the last factor is, what are the secondary species that we can benefit with your project by thinking about them on the front end? like the squash bee and our pumpkins. Contact a Pheasants Forever biologist and we can help you plan for these six factors to get the most out of your next habitat project. Hey, here's a couple pumpkin factoids for you that you might not know. In the United States, we grow about 1.5 billion pounds of pumpkins a year, worth about $149 million. And pumpkins have both a male and a female flower and require insects to be able to pollinate them, like honeybees and our native bee, the squash bee. Just another example of one of several kinds of food that need insects to be able to get on our plate, like blueberries, apples, melons, cucumbers, and almonds, and our pumpkin to be here tonight. <laughs> Trick or treat! Oh, ho, ho. Hey, with a great plan and future management, we can design projects that will benefit all kinds of things. Pheasants, quail, honeybees, native bees, and pumpkins. Designing projects with benefits for more than just pheasants and quail, that's great habitat. Now what are you supposed to be? A ninja. A ninja? You look like Elsa from Frozen. Are you?